Hello there. Take a look at this. Not impressed? Well, that's alright. For those of you interested in how to make a simple grid-based movement system like this, with collision detection and smooth movement, let's get into it. In this series, we'll be exploring how to create a grid-based movement system as well as a collision, camera controls, and triggers, and other associated topics like moving platforms, adding verticality, etc. Make sure to stick around until the end to see the final version as I cover a few different implementations and go through what was wrong with them. Okay, let's start off by creating a new project. I use the 3D with extras template as it has a nice lighting. Let's clear away all this junk and create a plane for us to walk on with a cube, which is our player. I like to reset the transforms just to make it easier to see what is going on. This just resets the positions, rotations, and scales to default. Now I'm just going to quickly whip up a material for our player. This nice blue color looks good. Adjusting the camera will give us a better view of what is going on. Okay, great. I'm going to remove this script and then also remove the reference from the main camera. And I'll just leave this other stuff here for now. Okay, time to create a script to move the player. I'm calling mine player movement. You can call it whatever you like. Here we go with the first implementation of our movement. It is the most simple type of movement I could think of. As you can see, this implementation is not really what we want, though it does work. I would like to have some smoother movement. Back in the player movement class, we are going to add a float, a vector 3, and a bool. The float is for movement speed, and we'll set that to 0.25 for now. The vector 3 is to store our target position. That is the position where we want to end up after we finish moving. So in our case, that is one unit forward. The bool is just to keep track of whether we made it to the target position or not. Now we're going to go ahead and add logic in here to move towards the target position and then check whether we are close. If we are really close, say within 0.05 meters, then we just move directly onto the position and set the moving back to false. Okay, let's see how this goes. While the player is clipping through the floor, which is definitely not what we want, let's just adjust the cube and leave the player at zero on the y-axis. Okay, that's looking a bit nicer for sure. I am concerned about if the move speed is set too high, it'll never be close enough to hit that snap distance threshold and will fly off into the distance. We'll take a look at that after I add some new movement code to handle moving forwards and backwards. Let's move the snap distance into its own field now so we can change it in the editor. There we go. Setting the move speed too high with a low snap distance means the cube will just skip over that point. This is because the cube is moving at more than 0.025 units per frame, which is what we set our snap distance to now. So the player has the ability to be really close to the threshold and skip right over it in the next frame. Let's now add some code to set a starting position every time we move. Every frame we check if the distance from the player's current position is greater than 1, and if it is, we snap back to the target position. This means we can now get rid of the snap distance altogether. Okay, this is looking much smoother, but it actually feels quite bad, and that is because I have used the axes rather than button pushes. So holding down the button makes the player slide along, which is not really what we're looking for. Doesn't feel good to me for this kind of movement. 
Let's just uh, replace that with key presses instead. And for now we'll use this very straightforward approach. I'm using a QWERTY keyboard, so I'm using WASD. If you want to change the keys, you can just change them very easily. Just replace the letters here. Um, while we're at it, we may as well add in the left and right movement. So far we've been moving around this empty level, and that is pretty boring. So let's add some obstacles and collision detection. Okay, start by adding a few cubes and scaling them to create walls. I'm using rotated walls as well to test the robustness of the detection because I know that it's going to be a problem. Because we're translating our object directly through code, it's not as simple as sticking a collider on each object and letting the default physics do the work. We just go straight into solid objects. Let's solve this by using some ray casting. There are other methods such as collision overlapping, but I find ray casting to be consistently more reliable in general. Okay, so here we are adding some code to fire one ray in each direction. If the way we want to move has something obstructing it, then we can't move that way. It's pretty simple. Let's set up a ray length field so we can adjust it on the fly if needed. I'm setting this to 1.4 because our player is one unit thick. So this will stick out 0.9 units from the player. You don't want it to stick out one unit from the player because then they will never be able to be flush with any wall. Well, unfortunately, there are some clipping issues. This is because the ray is at the center of the player and these angled walls aren't being hit by the ray. We could try extending the ray, but then we wouldn't be able to be flush with the wall. Okay, so what we're going to do is cast two rays in each direction instead of one, and set up some fields which we can play with as well. At the first, we are setting up one ray offset field for each of the three axes. Then, we want to consolidate some of this code into its own function. So we update the movement code to reflect this. At the last, we implement the can move function. Now we will fire two rays from each side offset by whatever we set in the editor. Let's test it out. Okay, great. This is looking pretty good now. In the next episode, we will learn how to follow this character smoothly with the camera and have the view rotate nicely too. Don't forget, you can download all of the project files from the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Catch ya.